Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had a little panic here. I lost all my little pictures I wanted to show you guys. Hi. Hi, it's not the night before Christmas. <laughs> it's not that far off. It's Wednesday, December 22nd. When this is over, John and I are going out to Costco. Are we cray crays or what? But I gotta get some of that ceviche. That's what I want there. I hope you're all doing well. I'm just chatting away to myself. We have a lot to cover today and I thank you for joining me. And no doubt all of you are kind of in the same okay mode of if people are coming to your house what do you do about it etc the food and all of that also a lot of you have written me and you're working on your little project at your kids house so they can deal with all the cooking please help them and, <laughs> and then we go from there i am this year starting to say okay if you can bring this and you can bring this I haven't done that before good okay so I did not turn off. I would. Uh, I'll, uh, I. Sorry, guys. I, I'm going to do something. I hope I don't lose you. A Firefox. I don't want to listen to this. Beep beeping. There we go. There we go. We're all there. All right. So uh, yesterday, just a little while people log on. A little storytelling. We went out to see the girls at work. Two, three of them are sick. Uh, just a rotten cold. So there were just five of us. Um, it was uh, it was uh, Julie, Suzanne, Kristen, John, and myself. And I said, "Okay, let's we're going to bring some chai out there." Well, of course, we went to Starbucks, and they were out of chai. Go figure that one. But uh, they didn't know I was bringing a treat. And so we set the time. At, we set the time at eleven o'clock. We went out there, and I walked in with this. And I everyone's just thinking, "Oh my gosh, I just don't want more sweets." Oh, but alas. No. Yes. It was so good. Um, Honeycomb Catering um, does it here in our area. And actually, she's a school teacher, so she just does it for a friend. Every single thing on this tray was beautiful. But perhaps the thing I would have injected directly into my veins, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see pomegranate seeds, but they had a blue cheese in there. I Oh, and then to the left of that and up, I didn't even get to that. Uh, the, there was this chocolate stuff that Jennifer put in. I mean, every, John is not one for one of these things. And he said, there was not one bad piece of food in that. So yet yeah, uh, Monday, yeah, today's Wednesday, Monday, it's going to get really goofy, these lives, by the way, and I'll go over it quickly, but bottom line is just follow the instructions that you see on Facebook and on our website. The electrician came. Santa came! So I want to show you what Santa brought me. Yay! <laughs> I love this. I love everything about this. I wanted one forever. This is in my sewing room. And uh, right above it, I thought I had a picture here. I don't. There's a, a hand-carved fish of Pop Pops. <laughs> it's right above it. And, and it was funny. When they were putting it up, I'm kind of going, oh. And then when they dangled all the crystals, I'm like going, oh, this is just unbelievable. I'm finished. The room is done. So uh, today, let me tell you what we're going to be doing. I have a video with Jill Curdla, you're going to love her work. She took a pretty nice fine ribbon at Houston. And then we're also going to do what I call the uh, spoke. I, I don't know if that's what it's really called. The spoke. And it's what I put in some of my centers. So, but you guys are so, oh, one more thing so I don't forget it. Okay, Color My World, this year's BOM, that you get the entire pattern for free if you are a subscribing member for 49 bucks a year, will go bye-bye December 31st. So please go download everything that you need. We do not take away the videos that Barbara has provided. Please go get it, please. And then on uh, January 1st, then we have Irene Blanks, um, and it's a garden party down under. 
and I will be giving you the instructions of when Barbara will be doing her lives at the end so you can grab a pencil and so you can kind of stay on top of it. She's actually going to do a live before the end of the year so you can get ready. So what would we do without Barb? I just don't know. Okay, so here is um, Donna. Hadn't seen your work, Donna. I mean, not this round. You have it on a black, and I'll, I got to tell you something. I, when you look at these, everybody, look at the succession of stitches and how they go from the outside in. But what is really super cool is like that feather and those daisies and little cross stars that are in the negative space. I love that. So. As I show you these things, just make a mental note of what you're seeing, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and then we go forward from there. Here is Paula's, and um, we've looked at hers before. I'm kind of trying to get new stuff right now. Uh, she was the one that did it with all the different shapes, and she said it kind of looks doc Dr. Susie, but I want you to look at the right hand, let's call it Paisley or Teardrop, those loop de dupes are just couched down, meaning that she puts down the green thread and then just puts little yellow threads on top to hold it in place. I wish I could blow it up, but I can't. So take note of that, please. And then a couple of you are putting uh, beads on it. So if you go to the lower left, this is Trisha's, and um, I, I think it looks fabulous. I just going to say, I would probably put the beads on last, not to steal your thunder, because I'm also going to show Kristen's, because my thread would always get caught up on that, so, and that drives me crazy. And then also, after the new year, I'm going to show you how to do that crosshatch grid that's on the top in that purple. That's a real fun, fun, fun filler. And then Kristen's doing beads, too, in the upper left. Now, I don't know what is going on in the center down below. I can't wait to see. It appears that you've appliqued some sort of circle on top or something. Um, I'm looking forward to following all of this. So, Becky Guile Anderson, yes, my happy place has gotten even happier. <laughs> Just, I, I love it. And then Robin wanted to know if light comes through the window and it, like, Goes, ding, ding, you know, the little sparkles. No, it's when the evening lights are on that it just captures the light. So, okay, let's go take a look at my video with Jane or Jill. I think you guys are going to be blown out by her work. I just was like, whoa. And she talks about her prize. Let's go. Well, hello, Jill Curdola. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for taking time out of your artful, inspired life to spend with us. <laughs> I hear congratulations are in order. They are. I am uh, beyond excited about getting this award from Janome and for the innovation. Um, I, it just was very unexpected and very appreciated both. Well, um, in getting ready for this, you've already done an interview with Ricky, so people can Google you, you know, on the site and look at that interview. But um, was this the first time you've been in Houston or entered the show, or what's the story on it? Um, no, I was. I've been to Houston once before, and that was when um, I was the rising star uh, a couple, three years ago, and that's when I interviewed with Ricky. Um, and I have entered the tactile architecture and a few other non-judged categories before. Okay. So this was the first time I'd really entered the judged categories. Well, and I have to say too, like your quilt is going to be on the end with a big fat <laughs> ribbon on it. I wish I could see it, but I, I unfortunately won't be there. Yeah, but tell them why, because you have a pretty darn good excuse. Well, yeah, I had a chance to go stay with a friend in an apartment in Paris for two weeks. 
and I just got back and it was the opportunity of a lifetime. And so I just couldn't do two trips in the, such quick succession. So I hear you. Here's one, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> um, so I, before we look at the piece, which is just fabulous. I want to show some of your other work so people can have kind of a look-see of who you are and the kind of art that you produce. All right. All right. So let's take a, oh wait, yeah, let's take a look at this one and then I'm going to go backwards. Let's take a okay. look at this beauty. Um, I live in an urban area and I used to go up on the top of the um, parking area right across from us, a parking ramp. And there's a flock of pigeons that lives there. And so this was from a photo that I took of my buddies, the pigeons. Mm. And uh, then it's it's heavily quilted and embellished, some beading on it, et cetera. How large is that about? It's about uh, 20 by 24, I think. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Um, and then this is another piece of yours. And you do things like on residencies or something like that. What's the story? Right. Okay, this you work in categories. I guess I kind of messed up by not saying that. Right. Uh, this one, I did about 20 pieces as a result of being the artist in residence at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And what that means is I got to live in the park for a month and just be inspired. I gave three presentations to the public while I was there. And then uh, for about six months afterwards, or probably almost a year afterwards, I did uh, pictures that were uh, a result of my pictures there. And so this was actually on my last day there, this bridge was uh, a piece that I found in one of the hikes that I took. Okay, but I am really confused here. Is this a photograph or is this actually the quilt? The photo is um, under, the photo gets printed on fabric. Uh huh. And then is, uh, I take that and there is almost very little of the actual photo that's shown afterwards. For instance, down at the front right corner at the uh -huh. bottom there, that is almost all confetti. Uh, little pieces of fabric behind tool. Um, there is some velvet behind it that is in the black areas because I cut through that area. And um, this is why a lot of times my quilts, when you see the, the whole picture like this, they do just look like photographs. But Unbelievable. what I do is my photographs can't survive without the stitching that goes on them later. And I think we'll see better examples of that later on. And, and, and in setting up, you said something very interesting about photography and the quilts that you make, et cetera. And I'd like you to talk about that because I think it's pretty important. Yeah, um, I feel really strongly about using only my own photography for this. And I have people who come into my studio because it's in a public place and they mm -hmm. ask if they could bring in a picture that I could do. And I say no, because to me, when I take the photo, that establishes the color, it establishes the mood, it establishes the composition, it establishes, it's almost like the underlying sketch. And it's really, in my mind, at least a third, if not a half of the finished product. And I'm not willing to let someone else make those decisions wow. for me. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Um, the Urban Street. Oh. oh, this was this was fun. This was um, done in uh, Union Station in Washington, D.C. My husband and I were taking the train back to Virginia from D.C. and we had a four hour delay, which I thought was going to be just horrendous. And it turned out to be four hours of the best life <laughs> one could have as both a photographer and a quilter. I took probably 50 pictures while we were there because the light on the marble floor and the commuters coming in and out were just phenomenal. And so this is a result of that. This was shot from an upstairs uh, uh, mezzanine looking down at the commuters. So I'm going to say this to you. When we were in Union Station, I didn't whip out my camera. I think that's where they have the really good restaurants, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I ate. <laughs> And um, looking at that beautiful floor brings us to this next um, quilt of yours, which I think is astonishing. <laughs> oh, this one is a fun one. I've done a series of uh, probably four or five varying in sizes, but three this size, which is about six foot long and about two foot high. Um, 
of sidewalk pictures. I walk every day to my studio and I take mm -hmm. a lot of photos of the sidewalk as I'm passing. And so this is four different photos that were put together and then an extreme amount of uh, surface design done on top of them. The drain, for instance, has, I think, three layers of additional uh, uh, batting behind it. For, so it's very dimensional. And so is the little cigarette there, which mm -hmm. is evidence of the night before, because I took that picture on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there's a whole lot of fabric behind the photograph uh, fabric that was cut out and exposed underneath, like right in the center of the second from the left part, all those little gray circles is actually gray felt that's behind. Oh, the wow. That were cut out and let that shown through. And so wow. there's some weaving, there's some uh, applique, there's all kinds of stuff in this. So what's your background? Um, my background is in art, but in graphic design and creative director. I worked at both ad agencies and in the corporate world. And I also taught color and design at a uh, junior college in Madison, Wisconsin. So all that stuff, meaning that I did a lot of work for other people, and now I do it for myself. <laughs> well, you certainly have the eye. And interesting, I just want to throw out there, um, I kind of have a generic art degree. One of the more important classes for graphic design was advertising. Mm -hmm. Because you really start looking at things really differently. Um, that was, And I went to San Francisco State, but y you've got it going on, but I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then let's look at this little one. I mean, this is just so simple and perfect. Oh, yeah, when I get, I get, uh, it's about four inches square uh -huh. or four inches out across. And once I'm working on my big pieces, I take time off and I make these little ones. We also, uh, at the art center where my studio is, we have a gift shop. So these appear in the gift shop and well, they're on uh, your website too. They're you're selling right. your website they too. They are. They're they're at my um, little tidbits. And what is your website? Uh, just jillcurtla.com. I think you need to spell your last name. K E R T T two T's U L A K E R T T U L A. Okay, now to delay no more, let's take a look at the baby that won the Innovative Design with Jonomi. Okay, you guys, if you're not sitting down, sit down. Oh. Uh, this is about, I can't remember now, I think it's about 50 inches wide and about 36 inches high. So it's one of the larger quilts that I've done. And uh, it was done during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually have a lot of people coming into my studio because, like I say, it's so open to the public. And uh, during the pandemic, we were allowed to come to our studios, uh, but we weren't allowed to have public. And so I was all alone for a long time in my studio, which was a very unique experience. And so this is kind of reflective of that for me. I want to look at the picture that um, that it was inspired by. And of course, this is a self-portrait. Oh, come on, chill. <laughs> well, you had to, uh, uh, I belong to several different um, camera groups and photography groups, one of which is run by Ricky Timms. And uh, this one was, uh, we had to take a self-portrait. And again, it was just fun to just try and do something a little different and to do black and white. So. Oh. Beautiful. So I want to look at the at the big one again before we get some details. Look at that. Was it difficult yeah. to put the color in? No, it was really interesting to me because it was very, um, this is the first time I had ever used paint on any of my work. And mm -hmm. because it started as black and white, I did use real light washes of paint to mm -hmm. start putting in the color. But the big problem for me or the big challenge for me on this was how do I integrate the stitching and the quilting into the photography? I didn't want it to just be a photograph on a quilted background or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that was what, what really was the big challenge for me. Well, I got a close up here. Okay, so what's going on here? Okay, here you can see um, where I've taken the pattern of the, uh, we'll see in the next close-up some of the weaving and, mm -hmm. and 
pixelated almost like weaving that I did and picked up that same grid program and did it with the um, stitching, the machine stitching. And then there's free motion stitching also. So I could move the grid slowly into the more uh, specific portrait free motion. And the black on the left, I have to say, it's not just the black from the photo. There's a, a layer of lace on top of the photo and then a layer of tulle on that. And then the stitching goes through those wow. layers. Wow. Various layers. wow. Okay, let's go look at the next one. These are fab. Yeah, this is how, um, what I did was I uh, just cut strips from the background, just cut many, many, many strips, and then wove fabric into those strips after I had uh, done a little bit of painting on the background. And so right where the cheek goes into the background, I think is a really good example of where I wanted the stitching to just flow right into that weaving Mm -hmm. without there being a, a demarcation zone. Mm -hmm. uh, edges, for those of you who are painters, we all know it's important to have edges who are either uh, uh, dissolve into the other edge or else are, are heavy edges. And these are one of the dissolving edges. And so yeah, that's Yeah, I like that. Let's, can, I want to go back and look at the main picture, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, I like, I, I mean, yeah, I like it. It passes my test. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh. you. <laughs> oh man, what's going on in your arm? Those dots. Those are uh, uh, like we saw in the close-up before. Those are the the grid pattern with okay. the shadow on from the uh, stitching. I'm gonna go back and look at it. Sorry, I'm learning. Everybody, that's okay. There got, you go. Got you. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. <sighs> Are you happy? <laughs> I am happy. I am happy. And I have to say, that's why the word innovation was so important to me in this, in this prize, because it was truly innovative for me to do this piece, uh, both in technique and in subject in a whole lot of ways it was not like what I've done before. So it was, that was important to me. Isn't that fun though, when you're, when you're out of your comfort zone, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, isn't that fun? Yeah. Yeah. So if so, okay. So tell me a little bit about the studio where you're at. And I mean, are you there five days a week and people come and look at you or what's the deal? Yeah. Uh, we're kind of a art zoo. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Charlottesville, the city of Charlottesville, Virginia is wonderful in the sense that they subsidize our building. It was an elementary school many years ago. And about 40 years ago, after it being a couple other things, it was the city decided to make it into a um, art center. So there's about 40 some of us artists who have permanent studios within the art center. And there's five different exhibition areas, both for us to use and for the community and for anyone who's a member to use, whereas about 200 other members who are outside, who aren't renting members, but are outside. And what's the name and of it? So, uh, pardon me. It's, I'm sorry, what's uh, the name McGuffey of it? McGuffey Art Center. Okay, okay. And uh, as a member, we get very subsidized rental, but for that, we are self-governed. So we have to serve on committees and do our, our elbow grease work. And we have to be open a minimum number of hours, have our doors to our studios open for the public to come through. We also hold tours for school groups to come through and um, all kinds of uh, community activities. I love this. Is it seven days a week? Uh, it's open six days a week. We're closed today on Monday. Okay. Um, but I'm usually here at least six days and during football season, even Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll rent next door to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jill, I just, abs I, 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 congratulations. Um, Thank you. Wonderful. I wish I could see it in person. So I'm going to have to live through this right now. And um, I hope I, I don't think we personally have met, right? Yes, we did meet when I think you were the logistics person while Ricky was talking to me at our last. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so um, welcome back from um, France. And Thank I you. can't wait to see what you come up with next. Okay. You want to play sometime on TQS? Absolutely. Okay, cool. <laughs>
have have a great day and thank you and again yay congratulations thank you very much thank you <laughs> amazing absolutely amazing and you know i love the idea of that art zoo I mean, what a wonderful way to bring the arts to people, you know? So I don't think Livermore has anything like that, but it's an interesting concept that if you know of a place, you might want to implement it in your area. All right, so let's get to work. Let's come down here. All right, I'm going to get us all. I couldn't adjust this while her thing was doing for fear it would uh, goof up on me. All right. So what we're going to do is this thing right here, and I'll show it to you finished again. I got to wait, I got to uncross my legs because it makes it jiggly. See, right, right here. Isn't that neat? And uh, I, I added French knots after I did what I'm going to show you right here. And note that I did a couple different colors on the, the weaving. It's really easy to do. So before we get to that, I want to show you one thing with this metallic. I was working with this the other day, right? And there we go. And I, the metallic was kind of hinking up on me, for lack of better words. I found while I was sitting here working, if I do pull it with my thumb, remember, I'm a left-hander, hold the needle with the left, pull with the right. If I really do hold it like this, it will become less problematic with getting all funny on me. Now, I hope I'm right. Yeah. Remember on the other day, it was like it would get like bubbles in it and in the thread. It was just not very nice. So just hold it with your thumb. And there you go. That did a little bit, but not too bad. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. So what I did was I drew the circle. I drew the circle. I if I can bring it up this way a little bit to me we go. And I used my uh, Disappearing Ink Pen by Quilter Select. It's purple. And the I have two threads I'm going to play with here. I'm going to play with a pink. Hold on here. What is that? A pink and then a multi. And then after I do a circle, I went across, right? Like a cross. And then I did an X. And I'm trying to hit its spot in the center. And that's the that's the basic bones of this whole thing. I'm going to do this one. This is so easy. I think the main thing with this is not to pull too tight. So I'm going to come up. And I'm going to come down. Straight across. I'm going to go to the neighbor. You know, there are a ton of fabulous videos of, and learning tutorials and everything online. So please take advantage, like go to Google and see what other people are doing. Because there's just the sky's the limit. I mean, we're just doing the basic bones here. I'm not going to worry about how goofy that is in the center. See, I was like that. Not going to worry about it. Come up here. Going, oh, I think I'm going to go out a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to come down here. There we go. I could weave with this thread, but I'm going to do pink. So let me go on this side. I think the back is just as fun as the front. There we go. Oh, of course it had to not on my demo. Of course. There we go. Just pulled it. There. And now I've got my pink. Do I have a knot in it? Yeah, I do. Remember, don't pull it too tight. But I'm talking about the thread. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here next to the center, like in between one of those things. I'm going to 
go underneath the spoke and go to and then go to you know what I'm gonna do I think I did this last time I'm gonna actually go tack down the center that's what I'm gonna do so it doesn't slippy slide all over I'm just gonna do a little tacky tack and if it looks funny in the end I'll just do a French knot on top of it but this should keep that center from sliding all over there Let's try that now. I actually am starting a little bit differently than what I did. I keep getting hooked up on my desk. So I came up on this side. Don't do how I did before. Go underneath. Go to the next spoke. Wrap underneath. Or wrap, go over. Then go to the next spoke. Don't pull too tight. I think that's true in all stitches. This is going to be so beautiful in the um, variegated. Let's see, where are we? There it goes there. This stitch is about as dumb dumb as it gets when you just establish that you go over the first one, go under the second, and then I'm going to go over the first one, go under the second, and it will look a little funny at first. And you'll see this starting to, you know, I'm not much for a Hallmark Christmas movies, but I have to tell you, when I'm doing this, it's just the best. You know how it's going to end before it starts, and you only have to look up every once in a while to see who's talking. <laughs> starting to happen. There's other weavy stitches like this, but I think this is the most straightforward one to, to learn with. And I see that some of you have already been doing this. Stitch. Go to the forum. See how it's coming alive? just beautiful. Okay, let's look at another finished one. And so it goes. Just keep going until you get out to the edge and then secure it off underneath. And again, you might want to do some French knots or something like that. Let me go to the neutrals one. By the way, that one example on the black with stuff going in between these things, really, I went, hmm, I may want to do that. So here's one where I did two colors, and then I did that little V stitch. Where'd you go? That little V stitch and threw in a French knot there. Here's one where I didn't change the color of the spoke, or I changed the spoke, I didn't change the color within the wheel. And then I did little, I like the French knots, I think you need to do that. And then this is the one that we started with. So I think this is a really, fun stitch to do. Uh, you're going to have a lot of time to be stitching now as we head into the holidays because um, we're heading into the holidays. So please grab a pencil and I'd like to tell you what exactly is going on. I just got off the phone with Barbara Black and okay first of all the new block of the month starts January 1st which is on a Saturday. Perfect. And the show will air too. So that's all exciting. Also, you're going to see Barbara's quilt. Barbara's making a second one or working on her samples with the kit, but the first one was out of her own fabric because we were just having a heck of a time getting the fabrics. So that's fun to see it in scrap with somebody else's stuff. But what is going to happen is today's Wednesday, the 22nd. 
all right? Merry Christmas, the Christmas Eve on Friday and Saturday. And then on the 27th, on Monday, Barbara is going to tell you how to prepare for this quilt. What do you need to do? So on the 1st, we can come out swinging, okay? But her remember, she always does a live the first Friday of the month, and that didn't happen until the 7th, and we just thought that was too long. So that's why she's having the jumpstart thing on the 27th. So you're not going to want to miss that. All right, then... I'm going to be off. I'm going to be off. I'll be back on um, January 3rd, and we'll do some more stitching. I'm going to tell you straight up right now, my January and February is going to be very, very flaky. Um, I am the first week. I will be here on the 3rd. I'm going up to Cindy Needham's on the 5th for class to take, and then I'm going to craft Napa the next week. So I will be here the first two Mondays, and then it will kind of get back to normal. Uh, Barbara will be here on the 7th for the BOM. Uh, just please look at your newsletter, look at the postings and stuff like that, all right? So that way we can all stay on gear with this. Okay, whoa, Christmas Eve is this Friday. Yes, Amy, it is this Friday. <laughs> Let's see what else. I love how the circle with the blue in the middle variegates into the background color. Yep. So what I want to say to you is um, Merry Christmas. It's been a rough year. I so appreciate that we can be together on this format. And I thank you for your flexibility when my life gets a little bit in the way because I don't want to go anywhere. But there are things like in February we're going to Hawaii that I'm just going to do, okay? <laughs> but we're going to work around it. Um, we were going to go up to the cabin for New Year's Eve. That's not going to happen because it's going to have a lot of snow up there. We're getting snow. We're getting snow. And we're not equipped for snow. We are wimps. So I will leave you with this last message. It has been a pleasure, a pleasure hanging out with you via thequiltshow.com. I hope that, well, let's put it this way, 22, <laughs> we've been waiting for you.